What's going on guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to be reacting to Britain's largest battery, a massive lake in Wells. This video was recommended in the comments section of another video and as soon as I saw the title, I knew this would be something I'd really enjoy checking out. I'm not really sure what to expect here. Based off the title, it makes it seem like the lake itself is the battery. Uh, so if that's the case, I, I didn't know that you know a lake or a body of water could actually be a battery. I'm not really sure if that's what it's saying. Obviously, I understand, you know, things like hydroelectric power, you know, moving water currents can move turbines and create electricity, but it almost sounds like the lake itself is a storage facility for the power. Like it the lake itself is a battery. Uh maybe that's not what it's saying. I'm not really sure, but uh anyways, guys, like I said, I don't know what to expect here. So let's just go ahead and dive in and learn about Britain's largest battery. Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. This time coming from beautiful North Wales. As you can tell, the weather is really blessing us with its charms. Uh, it's a little bit rainy and wet, but we're not worried about that because we're going inside a mountain. Yes, you heard right, inside a mountain. This behind me is Dinorwig, and it is one of the first and possibly one of the largest pumped storage facilities in the entire European area. Oh, dude, that's so cool, man. Dude, this looks like they're going really far. So 600 meters above us, at the top of the mountain that we're literally underneath, it's extraordinary, there is a lake. And that lake has got water in it. The water comes down 600 meters down a big... 600 meters? Wow, dude, that's crazy tube lots of big tubes and it comes down to here this is the valve this is how they turn it on or off at the moment it is open those yellow weights behind me they are 15 tons each there's two of them on each wow. valve and that allows the valve to be closed so you imagine the enormous pressure of that water coming down 600 meters it's incredibly powerful and they can close it off in 20 seconds using those two counterweights to help close the valve yeah. and then they can open it and the water pushes it open lifts the lifts the weights up so at the moment it's open and it's running you can hear that the water's gushing through there and it's running the turbines in the turbine hall there absolutely colossal structure we've driven like half a mile through the mountain to get here so i'm just sitting here thinking like you know normally when you see like you know, hydroelectric, it, it's near like a waterfall or, you know, it's in the ocean or something like that. This is a still lake. And I can imagine because it's actually coming straight down 600 meters through these this piping system that the power and the speed behind that water would, would be quite a bit of a uh, force turning these turbines. I can imagine how that could uh, create quite a bit of an electricity. Okay. So great, thank wow. you very much for Look at that taking turbine. time to talk to us. I mean, I'm, I've always wanted to come and see this. This is an amazing facility you've got here. But can you just go through the basics of what it is? Because all I know is pumped storage. So you've got a lake at the top of a mountain, a lake at the bottom, and the water goes between the two. Yeah. Effectively, we're moving water backwards and forwards between those two lakes. Right. So in the morning, we'll be brimming at the, at the, at the top lake, at Llanmarchlin. Right. And then during the right periods of the day, we'd allow water to flow from the top lake to the bottom lake um, and generate some power when there's demand on the uh, on the grid system. Okay, so where's the bottom lake at? I mean, it's almost like, okay, so I'm sitting here picturing this, the lake at the top, you know, is the water from that lake is going through this piping system, going 600 meters underground, under the mountain, uh, into, you know, to these turbines, right? So the water is down under the mountain at that point, right? So is the lake under the mountain? Is there like this lake? down there with them or is there a lake because if there's a lake outside it has to be is pumped back through the mountain into the bottom lake so i'm not really sure what the bottom lake is um i would have liked to see that maybe they'll show us um okay anyway let's just let's just continue and then generally overnight we'll pump that water that's now in the bottom lake back 
back up to Lynn Macklin for repeating again the following day. Right, because it's, it's much bigger than I thought. I knew it was big, but mm -hmm. it's, is it 600 metres? It's, it's, it's uh, the next head is about 550 metres. 550 yes. metres. Yeah. Wow. So that is a colossal pressure then. And when it yeah. went at the bottom of that tube, the it's, pressure... It's uh, 60, 60 bars, so that's 60 times atmospheric pressure right. of pressure of the top lake pushing down on us wow. down here. Wow. wow. And do you know... Ah, oh, that's good. Is that important? <laughs> no, it's alarms going off. But do you know how, in terms of volume of water, do you have an, any idea so of what, what you would... There's um, 7 million cubic metres of water up at the top lake, right. if, we're, uh, if we're full, if just over full, 7 million. 7 million cubic yeah. metres. Because that was one of the statistics I learned a long time ago with a very small water mill, was one cubic metre of water dropping one metre produces one kilowatt. Right, is, yeah. is that about right? About right, yeah. Right. Yeah. So you've got seven million cubic, cubic meters, meters That's of a this lot water. Of so there's quite a lot of water up yeah. there. Wow. And obviously that will last us if we were to generate as a full station output around five and a half hours worth of running. Right. Yeah. Right. And then it takes about six and a half hours to pump that water back up the hill if we were empty. And in terms of energy use, then would you use you presumably use more energy to pump it up That's than correct. you get than yeah. you get So we're back. a net consumer of power. So right. for every three units of electricity that we generate, we consume four. Right. So that right. Uh, that gives us a cycle of efficiency of about 75 yeah. percent wait so am I, i'm i'm i can't that can't be right like so wait is he saying they use more electricity than they produce then i don't understand i don't really understand it i've never really looked into anything like this so i'm not really i'm not really sure how that you know how that works but if you use more electricity pushing the water back up than you produce, then how do you have electricity to, I presume, I, I presume this is used for the power grid in wells, I'm guessing. Is that, is that what we're doing with this electricity from this, from this battery? Um, hmm, that's interesting. There's obviously, obviously it works. Obviously, uh, the system is, uh, you know, it's, it's good for wells. It's good for they wouldn't have it if it wasn't right. So like, so obviously I'm just missing something on how you how it's a benefit to use more electricity than you produce. Or maybe he said seventy five percent. Maybe I misinterpreted that. Maybe they use seventy five percent of the electricity they produce to push the water back up to the top lake. Hmm. Anyway. Which is actually, it's pretty good because you're, I mean, you're, to pump that water up there, that's heavy. That's right. Push yeah. That. yeah. Basically, we're just one big battery. So yeah. we're storing this energy so that we can actually generate at the right time the right of day time. Yeah. when there is a demand for that energy. Right. What's your total capacity then in terms of gigawatt hours if, if you were absolutely full at the top lake? Yeah, but the top lake is about 10 gigawatt hours worth of stored energy. Right. Um, and, um, you know, we'd allow that water to flow down through the turbines during the day. Um, the utilization of that water will change depending on the day and depending on what's happening in the market, what's happening on TV, yeah. you know, whether it's cold, whether it's warm, so a load of factors go into, into that, but we will be just following a set of, of instructions either coming from the grid system operator or from uh, our energy management centre. And then can you vary, because I saw you've got, what, you've got six, uh, six generators here at uh, so you can, and you can, can you vary the amount they're outputting, for, you can vary the amount of water that's going through? In the, we can indeed, uh, yeah, the so the, the units can there. generate power here at Denorig, anything from 150 megawatts up to just over 300 megawatts. Right. Wow. Uh, each of the six machines. Right. Wow. So each of those, so because we saw one spinning, so that, right. was, that was a potential 300 megawatts. 300 megawatts potential, wow. yes. Yeah. That is, because the engineering is on such an enormous scale, isn't it? Yeah, and it's not just the fact that the engineering, it's the fact of where we are. We're inside a mountain. Yeah. So it's not just that you've got a generator and all the auxiliary systems that goes with generating electricity. It's the fact that it's deep inside it's a mountain in Snowdonia. <laughs> it's extraordinary, isn't it? So the, the thing that's always intrigued me, because I've always completely understood the theory of water coming down, going through a turbine, driving a generator, going out into a lake, but it's how you get it back up and what, what the machinery you use to get the water back up. I mean, is there separate pumps or how do you send totally it Totally the up? same piece of kit, basically, operating in reverse. So now we're using the generators as motors to drive our pumps, which were previously turbines, wow. to suck the water out of the bottom lake, push it up the, um, the penstocks and the tunnels all the way up to Marklin again. So it's wow. exactly the same. A uh, piece of equipment right. in reverse. Wow. That is amazing. So that, so you, that is amazing. power coming out of it, you're putting power, power into in. it. Yes. That's right. That is a, it's so, it's like it's regenerative braking in an electric car on a very, very big scale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Is there a kind of a 
firm daily routine? It, it, it does vary then, it depending on demand. It tends to vary on demand, uh, tends to vary depending on one, uh, what our contract positions would be. Right. So there's never one day exactly the same as the previous one, right. because there'll be a load of these independent factors that go into determining what the demand yeah. of the system is on that particular day, and what other machines around the UK grid system are available, what problems there might be on, on um, the But you can units. also, from what I've heard before, you can come online very quickly. I mean, Indeed, you know, um, a unit here can come online from a state of readiness in about 10 seconds. Wow. So that's Ten what makes seconds? it unique yeah. to, to the, the other sort wow. of um, more traditional thermal plant. Maybe right. the that's impressive. Them, that 10 seconds. Minutes, uh, yes. Yeah, many yeah. minutes, yeah, yeah. So 10 seconds is pretty quick. Quite impressive. So it's basically flicking a big switch and it, it comes is, on. Yeah. 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 Well, presumably then the, the economics of it are that you can buy the electricity cheaper when you're pumping the water up and you can make that's you can idea. charge more for it when you're letting it go. That's the so idea, that's the, yeah. So you, the water that you the energy that you're procuring overnight to pump that water up the hill needs to be at a cheaper rate than what you were paying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, otherwise still yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. But that is the one of the benefits of having a fluctuating grid price. Yeah. I don't Interesting. Know exactly when this was built. Was it done in the So it was in, uh, built in the days of the Central Electricity Generating Board. C E G B. That's right. Yeah. So that was in the um, in the early um, 70s, so right. 1974, so construction starts here locally. Um, and then um, in 1983, the, the first uh, machine was away at the Norwich, and the place was obviously um, formally opened by Prince Charles in 84. Right. Oh, I see. So, okay. So it's been, and it's been running. And it's been running ever since. <laughs> um, you know, the utilization changes as we, as we discussed. But yeah. um, yes, you know, in the early days, it was more about running in standby modes and less as generation. Right. Um, these days, it's, it's, it's uh, a bit more generation. So do you think, oh, do you think it's, being, it's, used, it's being used to generate more, more right. often now? Yes. Right. Yes. And that's presumably because of the introduction of things like renewables with fluctuating and also market conditions. And, right. Yeah. You know, so there was in, in the um, in the past it was around a pool in the incentivized um, uh, market. What were the now noises? Um, you know, there's a set of new electricity trading yeah. arrangements that we're working to, um, which has which has changed the environment that the power station is obviously working in. Right. And that's the frustration I think that from I've heard from the national grid operators is that they want ten Denorwigs. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that we just don't quite have the geography to support no, that. I think that's one of the issues. I think when Denorig was being built, there were only three such sites in the UK that, right. were, that uh, could be considered, all of them in this part of the world. Oh, ah, right. Yes. Because it's bizarre, not, not in because you think, I think of Scotland's got mm -hmm. a few mountains. Mm -hmm. but No, they were, they were within about 10 or 15 miles of, uh, of Tramberis. Wow. All three, wow. yes. But they're not, there's no other, there's only, the, well, there's this one in Festinia. There's um, uh, the Norway here, Festinia, which is about um, 12 to 15 miles away as the crow flies. Um, Festinia is a bit smaller, uh, but um, still important. To I've still never heard someone use that saying uh, other than like, this might, has this been the first time I've actually heard that? I've seen that saying, like as the crow flies. Someone explained that to me, and now I can't remember exactly what it means. Um... What does that mean? Anybody uh, in the comment section uh, know what that means? Please let me know. As the crow flies. Sort of day-to-day -day running of the, of the system. But the construction of this is just mind-boggling because, I mean, the, the, that central cave which the, the turbines and generators are in is huge. Yeah, before we obviously <laughs> put the, um, the floors in, wow. the machine floors, as, you, yeah. as you just referred to, uh, could house some poles. Man, that's huge. You know, this makes me, like, I remember seeing at the beginning, well, I'll... Cathedral. I'll talk about it wow. after it's done. Wow. Quite a, quite a big place. <laughs> That must have been an amazing sight. You know, if, you, if you're driving a truck in there for the first time, first you're time ever. just picking up some rocks. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very uh, Lord of the Ringsy. You kind of yes, that indeed. big sort of all the tunnels going into the mountain. Yeah. But you don't look like dwarfs <laughs> with armour on. So it's good. It's a, it's a relief for us. <laughs> Great stuff. Great. Thank you. Ideal. Thank you very no much. problem at all. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that. It's been an amazing experience to, to see what's going on here. I'd like to quickly thank NG and First Hydro who've arranged uh, access for us because it was really special to see the inside of the mountain. Guys, this was pretty cool. Um, you know, I've never seen anything like this. I've, I've you know, I've never really looked into, uh, you know, power storage really. Um, and it's interesting how they consider this lake a battery. I mean, I, I don't think if I jumped into the lake, I would literally get, I don't know, 
electrocuted or something, you know what I mean? Um, but somehow it stores power. I'm still not really, I don't really understand the concept there. Um, but I thought this was really, really interesting. You know, like I obviously understand, you know, the concept of, you know, water goes from way up high in the mountain, comes through these piping system, hits those turbines at a, at a force, turns those turbines and creates electricity that then can be stored for when it's needed. So I understand all that. Um, I'm not really sure about how, maybe I was wrong about the numbers, but I'm not really sure how it actually makes sense that it actually takes more power to uh, pump the water back up to the top lake than it, uh, than, it, than it created in the first place and how that would make sense to I don't know. Anyway, maybe someone can explain that to me because I'm maybe I'm miss, I'm sure I'm missing something there because it just doesn't make sense otherwise. I've got to be missing some sort of context. Uh, they may have covered it here and I just didn't catch it or something, but uh, I'm sure it, it's very uh, very easy to understand if it's explained uh, you know correctly. But uh, yeah, I thought this was really interesting and uh, I would love to see something like this. I always enjoy learning about things like this. You know. Not just like this, but like just bridges and, and, and caverns and, you know, mining and, you know, all sorts of stuff. You know, just really interesting things. Uh, it's amazing what uh, humans create, you know. I mean, I'm curious if, though, this was this an actual mine before it was turned into this, uh, you know, this power plant. Um because like this looks like this was some sort of mine and then it maybe it was just a really good site to build this power plant. Uh, like I, I wonder if, you know, these are, I mean, these are some huge, uh, huge caves. It's almost like this may have been, uh, you know, a mine before of some sort. And maybe once the mine, you know, was closed, they uh, turned it into this, you know, this water power plant. So I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, just gives me that vibe. Um, but yeah, guys, I thought this was interesting. Um, you know, if you if you uh, have any uh, things you'd like to share about this power, this battery, uh, please feel free to do so. I'd love to learn a little bit more about it from you guys in the comments. Um, you know, I, I am curious. So is this, does this uh, power plant, they call it a battery, but I think it's like, you know, it's really a power plant. Um, does it produce the power for wells? I guess I guess it just goes straight into the grid when they need it. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, please feel free to you know talk about this. Or I'd also uh, appreciate if you have any other ideas of interesting things you think I'd enjoy checking out. Please feel free to share them. Uh, you know, there's many things that I would love to check out that I probably don't even have a clue that exist. So please feel free to share them. And uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow me in my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.